go ahead and do another book review. Um, this one's a little different than last time because I actually read the whole series already. It's called the let's see it, the Sweep series um, by Kate Tiernan. Um, this is actually the last book, The Night's Child. There's like 15 books in all. Uh, it took me a little while to get through it. I kind of got distracted like 12 books in and well wanted to play video games but Nick is playing and I don't know I like so many things that get too, too distracted so anyway <clears throat> before I start talking about it I actually um, would like everyone to know that if you don't have any particular interest in like paranormal stuff or um, other religions or stuff like that then you might not want to watch the video it, I won't get like too in-depth but um, I like to read about paranormal stuff and, and about other religions and stuff like that um, I myself am not religious but I like to read about different theories I'm much too lazy to actually get in depth and read historical books about different religions um, at least at the moment um, although I have been pretty fascinated by say Native American mythology I love mythology Greek mythology, Native American mythology Scottish mythology, Irish American <laughs> anything to do with myths and stuff it really fascinates me I like um, stories like that and stuff like that um, which is why I read paranormal stuff. So anyway, the series that I read, it's called the Sweep series. Uh, like I said, it's got 15 books. Um, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not because the books are really small. Um, they're only about, to me this is small, but they're only about 100 to 200 pages a piece. Um, you can read books that are much, much bigger than that. And I just realized I'm looking at the screen instead of looking at the camera. Whatever. Anyway, so, uh, yeah. The, the, I want to say actually this last book is the biggest of all of them. I'm not really sure why that is. And I, I'm not positive. I think she actually may have not even intended to write this one at first. It was kind of it's like about a extra. Girl named Morgan. Um, she's kind of your just your average everyday girl. She's from New York. Um, living in a little small town for New York. Uh, small town in Illinois. More, <laughs> Way different than small town in New York, I'm, I'm sure. Um, she is I want to say 16 when the series starts out. Uh, so even though there's like so many books, it, it actually is in a very small span of time. So I think she's only 17 by the time the book ends. She's not even out of high school yet. Or the time the main series ends. And she's not even out of high school yet. She's probably warned. Oh, and if you haven't read the series, there are spoilers. And if you like spoilers, well, cool. If you don't, cool. You probably don't want to watch. Um... So anyway, yeah, anyway, the series is about a, a girl named Morgan. Uh, she's really smart. She is, like, in all honors classes. She plans on going to, I want to say, MIT after. Cause she's, she's that smart. Um, and she's just, she's pretty content with life. She's a little self-conscious, um, I think. She's described as really skinny and... and Dark, like like really dark intense looks um, I want to say that at one point her mouth was described it's like a slash in her face so really thin lips really kind of intense looks uh, she never had a boyfriend she doesn't know how to flirt kind of yeah anyway she's kind of awkward when it comes to that and um she her, her mom and dad are Catholic, and her 
sister, her little sister, is also Catholic. They go to church every Sunday. She enjoys it. Um, she, you know, has no problems with anything. She's just kind of coasting. And it's a really, it's really pleasant when it starts out. Of course, though, the story changes almost immediately when a boy named Cal comes into the picture. He's really dark and intense and attractive. And of course, she's like, hello. <laughs> and turns out that he is wicked. Um, more than that, he's actually what they call in the series a blood witch. Um, again, if you're not interested in these kind of things, that's cool. You may not want to watch any further. But I'm pretty fascinated by different people's theories and myths about things. For instance, in, in this series, um, there you can be Wiccan without being magical, but you're not a blood witch unless you're basically pure-blooded. Kind of weird to say. They almost like consider themselves like a separate species from humans because they have magical blood whereas if they try to um, have children with people who aren't magical half the time they're either weak or they can't conceive a child or the child that is conceived doesn't have any magic at all and I think that's kind of fascinating um, so anyway as it turns out Morgan is herself a blood witch which may be thinking, well then why is her parent cat are her parents Catholic? She's adopted. So that kind of puts a wrench in things and her contentment and and knowing about herself she you know goes through a really kind of big spiral not knowing you know who she is or what it means for her to be a blood witch and for her to be magical. Um and yeah it's it's pretty intense it's a really big spiral her first you know experience with being really attracted to a boy um of course a boy from an entirely different life entirely different way of of growing up and and perceiving life and things uh so it's really interesting to see her learn about these things and how she reacts and how she essentially rebels against everything because she's so angry not knowing the truth um but eventually she calms down she becomes not angry at her parents anymore realizing that they were just trying to protect her because it, as it turns out her witch parents have all kinds of fucked up drama going on yeah it's like it gets really really intense like uh, basically, for instance, her father is like the most evil witch there is in existence at that point in time. Um, he is a participant in um, what they call dark covens, uh, which, if you don't know what a coven in it, coven is, it's well, from my understanding and from the book. Uh, witches and Wiccan people forming a coven together. It could be, a coven could be all blood witches or it could be mixed, which if I remember correctly a mixed coven is people who are non-magical and magical but also who are blood witches of different ancestral clans. And that's another thing, apparently there are seven ancestral clans of blood witches. Now I won't list them all here because I didn't exactly memorize them. Um, you just kind of come to recognize them throughout the series. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty long. It, I, this is a pretty long video because um, of the fact that well, it is 15 books long. There's a lot to go through. And like I said, it was it's put into a short span of time in the book reality. 
but it's very detailed, a very well written, really, really interesting um, course. It is a teenage level read. There are no really mature things in it, um, such as erotica or anything like that. Um, not even really a lot of cursing or anything like that, just generally speaking, different kinds of religion theories of sorts. Um, like I said, I don't personally study Wicca or histories of other religions, so I, I don't know how based in truth the story is, or if, you know, Kate Tiernan made up her own uh, sort of theory about it. I know a lot of people do. They kind of take inspiration from other things and from fact and pretty much do whatever they please with it. Anyway, I, I don't want to like give the whole thing away, especially if you want to read after you know watching this video. Very, very good series. Um, th this is actually my second read through of the series. I first read this series when I was in high school. Okay, I want to third read through because I first read that read this series when I was in high school and that was so many years ago now already um, and then I read it again later because when I was in high school it wasn't finished yet uh, at least not as far as I knew cats are fighting anyway um, and then this time this time I'm rereading it again of course I got distracted because I sort of learned everything last time. Um, yeah, so I'm just trying to, uh, if you guys have any suggestions of how I can make my reviews better, or if I should include more details, or like pretty much do a rough draft or something first, um, I'm open to suggestions, open to some constructive criticism. Uh, like I said, I'm basically just doing this for fun. I like to talk about stuff like this, and you know, if you watch it, you watch it. If you don't, you don't. But uh, if you have suggestions for me to read other stuff, um, I will admit it might take me a while. I get distracted pretty easily. Plus, uh, I actually work full time now. Um, but I am definitely open to looking at it. Um, and I'll let you know if I decide to read it or not. Yeah. So, again, if there is anything you have to suggest or anything you think I should talk about um, besides what's in here, uh, let me know. And also, um, I'm going to try and read another book next. I don't know how many of you that have watched this have read Laurel K. Hamilton, um, the Anita Blake series, but that is actually my favorite series of like all time and she's my favorite author. I um, stumbled across her when I was 13 or 14. Got referred to her from a librarian at the Johnson City Library actually. Um, well I think she was a librarian. Not positive. That's how I remember her. Uh, and I loved it from the very beginning and I usually do an annual reread. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it this year. So, but especially because I haven't gotten caught up on the last couple. Um, this one is called Kiss the Dead. It's the 24th book in the series. I could be very, very wrong about that. But it's somewhere in there. There's over 20 books in the entire series. And, um, that might seem a bit daunting, especially if you just like a quick read, but I promise you it's worth it. Very good series, especially if you like paranormal stuff and uh, learning about other religions and myths and you know, theology, things like that. Uh, uh, Laurel's a really very good writer. I mean, I'm, I haven't been in, as impressed uh, by someone writing fiction as much as I have by her. And there is the fact that she's been writing for over 20 years. So I will talk more about that in the other message. I start talking about this other book. So yeah. So anyway, I'm going to read Kiss the Dead to get caught up. It's one of the newer ones. And then I got Affliction 
from the library. I plan on owning it at some point because um, I, I would really like to own all the Laurel K books. I pretty much had all of them up to um, hit list except I loaned a couple of the first ones out and I never got them back and that's happened like two or three times now. I probably need to start buying those out or at least remember who has them. So yeah I think that's it for today. Um, I'm also, I just want to remind you guys, I do have a fan fiction and a fiction press. I still haven't done anything with those, but I do plan on starting. I'm thinking about writing a poem here in the next couple of days. It may or may not be a mature poem, so don't know if you want to read it or not. And I also have a story that I'm supposed to be starting. I promised my niece a while back that I would get started on it because they, my, my niece and my mom liked it anyway. Uh, and I still haven't started on that, so I think I'm going to try and get that worked in there somewhere. I was thinking about going by chapters on it if, you know, I get people interested and, and they like to read it. So yeah, I think that's about it, and uh, hey, have a good night. Let me get some sleep here soon. Bye!